Hey there, Louis here. In this video, I will demonstrate how you can enable the recently released Microsoft Loop app. Now, at the time of recording this video, the Loop app is currently in public preview, and because it is its own standalone Microsoft 365 app, Microsoft admins have to perform some configuration in the administrative portals to make this app accessible to users. Now, if you've navigated to loop.microsoft.com and you've seen this error message, then that means that the app has likely not been enabled in your Microsoft environment yet. Now, I will guide you through the process of enabling this app, and it's important to note that to follow along, you will need to have access to the Microsoft admin portals with administrator permissions. Now, let's go ahead and let's dive in. All right, now the first step to enable the Loop app in your Microsoft tenant is to create a security group in the Azure portal. Now, once you're in the Azure portal, you want to click on Azure Active Directory and under the Manage menu, you want to click on Groups. Next, you want to click on New Group and you want to ensure that the group type is set to Security. Next, you want to enter a name for this group so I will call this Microsoft Loop Preview Group. And if you wanna put a description, you can do that here in this description field. Next, you want to scroll down to the membership type and we are going to create a dynamic user group. So I will go ahead and select this here. Now in this tutorial, we are going to create a dynamic user group. Now that means that this group will automatically update to add in any new users that are provisioned within your Microsoft environment. And it will also automatically remove any users who have left your organization and whose profiles have since been retired in Azure Active Directory. Now next, you want to click on add dynamic query. And here you want to click on the edit button and this is going to allow you to enter rule syntax. Now I am going to go ahead and paste in this value here that reads user.objectid space dash ne null. Now again, this syntax is going to ensure that all users in your tenant are automatically added into this group. Now I've included this syntax in the description of this video. So you can click on down, you can grab that syntax and you can go ahead and populate that in your dynamic member group. Next, you wanna click on OK. And next you want to click on Save. Next, you want to scroll down and click on Create. And you can see here that the group was created successfully. If you're finding this tutorial helpful, be sure to check out my other YouTube playlists, including how to use Microsoft Teams, how to use SharePoint Online, how to get started with Microsoft Power Automate. I have over 150 tutorials that provide answers to frequently asked questions about those different platforms. And I've included the link to those video playlists in the description below. Now let's get back to the video. All right, now the next step is to create a cloud policy that will actually enable the Loop app. Now to do this, you want to navigate to config.office.com. Now you'll wanna go ahead and sign in. Next, you wanna click on customization and you want to click into policy management. And here you want to click on create. Next, you want to give this policy a name. Now I will call this loop policy and you want to click on the next button. And next you want to ensure that this first option is checked. So you can see this option that reads this policy configuration applies to users in the specified group. And next you want to click on add group and we are going to search for and select the group that we created in the previous step. So you can see here, I started typing Microsoft and the Microsoft Loop preview group that we created earlier in the video displays here in the list. I'll go ahead and select this. And you can see here that it will also display the number of users or devices that are members of this group. Next, you wanna click Save, and then you want to click on Next. Next, you want to place your cursor in the search box and you want to type the word loop and click enter. And you can see here that there are three policies that we need to enable. The first one reads create and view loop files in Microsoft apps that support loop. 
The second one is create and view loop files in loop. And the third one is create and view loop files in Outlook. Now for each of these, we are going to click into them and we are going to then change this configuration setting from not configured to enabled. And then you wanna click apply. Now you can see here that the status updates to configured. Now I'll just go ahead and do the same thing for the remaining policies. And once you've updated all of these policies, you want to click on the next button. And here you want to go ahead and click on create. And you can see here that the policy is being created. And you can see here that we have successfully created the loop policy. Now it is really important to note that it can actually take between 24 to 48 hours for these policies to take effect. So I'll go ahead and navigate back to loop.microsoft.com. All right, now you can see here that I am back on this loop.microsoft.com page and I'll go ahead and refresh this. And you can see here that I am still receiving this error message. And you can see here that I am now able to access the app. Now it took about two hours for the policy that we created in this video to take effect in my Microsoft tenant. And again, it could be as quick as an hour or it could actually take an entire day. It does vary from tenant to tenant. So that's it. In this video, I demonstrated how to enable the recently released Microsoft Loop app while it is still in public preview. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Acabalos. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.